Hey guys, hoping all is well. So in this video, we're going to be continuing the read-along of The Secret Zoo by Brian Chick, Riddles in Danger. And uh, last time we finished off, we completed chapter 23. So today we're going to be starting with chapter 24. And as always, uh, please feel free to follow along, although uh, we don't seem to run across uh, too many pictures with these books. But uh, let's jump into it here. Chapter 24, The Plummet with Paji. Noah heard tapping on his window and sat up with a jerk. He threw his legs over the bed and glanced at the clock. 1.16 a.m. The tapping came again. Marlo? said Noah, thinking that the messenger bird was responsible for the noise. He dashed across the room and threw open the drapes, expecting to find the blue bird. But what he instead discovered shocked him into taking two steps back. Filling most of the window was a penguin. An enormous emperor penguin. Its flippers pressed against its sides... Its bill tipped upward, its webbed feet flattening the limbs remains of Noah's mother's summer flowers. Podgy. Noah threw open the window, allowing the cold night air to invade the room. What's wrong? Podgy spun around in the flower box, his flat feet slinging snowy dirt across the floor of the room, and presented his back to Noah. He wanted Noah to climb on. Noah gasped. Podgy! There's no way! My parents... The penguin jumped and f brought his feet down hard, shaking the box and rattling the shutters. His point was obvious. Noah was needed, and there was no time to waste. Noah had a vision of his mother walking into his room several hours from now to find his bed empty and his window open. This surely would force him to tell his parents about the secret zoo. What would that mean to the secret society? To the safety of the world? Paji jumped once more, shaking the box and rattling the siding. This is crazy! Noah went into his bedroom door and softly closed it. He stripped off his pajamas, then grabbed yesterday's wad of clothes off the floor and climbed into them. Man, I hope you know what you're doing. He put on a jacket, shoes, and his red hunting cap. Fully dressed, he walked back to the window and considered how to climb onto Paji. There was no way the flower box would hold his weight and Podgy's at the same time. How about I meet you at the front door? Podgy began to rock in place, his webbed feet crushing flower stems and leaving penguin tracks in the dirt. After a few seconds of this, he wagged his flippers up and down. Noah had spent enough time with Podgy to know what he wanted, which was for Noah to jump onto his back, hurling them both out of the flower box and into the air. You gotta be kidding me. Noah muttered as he backed all the way to the far wall. He stared at Podgy and the open window across the room and began became certain that this wasn't a good idea. Here goes, Noah said. Without another thought, he took off running. He jumped out the window, wrapping his arms around Podgy and knocking the two of them forward. Flower bed dirt spilled everywhere as they dropped toward the ground. Podgy was wagging his flippers. A second before they crashed, Paji flew out of the fall and swept across the yard, his stomach again brushing the snowy grass. Noe, Noah lay stretched across his back, his legs dangling beneath the penguin, his feet skipping over the ground. With a shift upward turn, Paji rose three feet, five feet, eight feet, more. As he soared near Fort Scout, two figures came into view, Megan and Sam. They leaned out the window marveling at the sight of Noah and Paji. Noah wondered what his sister was doing in Fort Scout, then dismissed his concern. Surely Megan had the greater question. Why was Noah flying across their yard on a penguin in the middle of the night? Paji looped around the big oak, swerving over under the longer branches. As he returned to the front, Noah again spotted his sister leaning out the window, her jaw hanging open, her pigtail sticking out. Points of moonlight shone in the other dark lenses of her glasses. Paji veered away from the tree and cut across the yard, heading for the concrete wall. Noah had once believed this wall merely divided his neighborhood from an ordinary zoo. Now he understood much more. The wall divided two worlds, Noah's and another, a place where animals walked beside humans in a city built upon the trees, filled with majesty, promise, and peril. This other world was known as the Secret Zoo. As Paji soared over the wall, Noah braced himself for anything. Chapter 25 Ella Wakes Up 
When Ella heard the tapping on her window, she threw off the covers and sat at the edge of her bed. The clock on her nightstand read 1.17. Something was wrong. She rushed to the window and peered through a slit of the blinds. Standing on the outside was Marlow. Their eyes met, and the bird opened and closed his beak with a chirp that was muted by the glass. Ella threw open the blinds and then the window, prompting Marlow to flap his wings in a fuss. Something wasn't just wrong, something was terribly wrong. What is it? Ella asked. The kingfisher dove into the air, flew in a tight circle, then landed back on the sill. He repeated this pattern again and again. The zoo? Do they need us? Marlow jumped a few inches and landed with a chirp. Ella's eyes widened. She gazed toward the zoo, but could see nothing other than her neighborhood houses, their windows dark, their occupants fast asleep. She looked toward the trees and the tarsiers in them. Nothing. She turned back to Marlow. Okay, go wake Richie. Tell him I'm on my way. Marlow chirped twice, sprang into the air, and dissolved into the night. She closed her window, dressed, then tiptoed from her bedroom. In the hallway, she heard from or she heard her mom snoring. If she were to wake and find her missing, Ella would be dead. At the door to the garage, she donned her jacket and earmuffs. As she slipped out, she reached for the button to open the door and stopped herself. Too loud. She opted for the small door to the backyard and grabbed her bicycle on the way. Outside, she climbed on the bike and pedaled across the snowy lawn. Once onto the street, she raced to Richie's house, wondering what could be wrong at the zoo. But didn't she already know? Yes, she was cert certain she did. She'd only seen Marlowe so crazed once before, the day he'd spotted Sasquatches charging from the caves of the Darklands. Now they were escaping from the grottoes. Certain that her world was under attack, Ella stood on her pedals and jumped and pumped her legs with all her might. Chapter 26. Richie Rides Again Tap! 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 Richie bolted upright, making his bed springs groan. What? Who, who's there? Tap! Tap! He swept his fingers along his nightstand until he bumped into his glasses. When he threw them on, the blurry view of the glowing clock digits came into focus. One seventeen. He glanced at the window, bug-eyed and confused. Dap, 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 dap. He erupted from the bed and rushed over to the window, where he pulled open the blinds. Perched on the outside sill was Marlow. He stared up at Richie, his head cocked to one side. Then he leaned forward and pinged his head be beak against the glass again. Richie flinched, then slid open the window. Marlow danced around, chirping wildly. What's... what... what are you... Richie saw something moving up the snow-dusted street. Something, someone was racing toward his house on a bicycle. As he peered out, Marla turned with a jump toward the shadowy figure. Richie realized it was Ella. What in the world? Ella veered off the street at a dangerous speed and bounced across Richie's yard, nearly crashing into a bare bush surrounded by the litter of its own leaves. She bumped her way to the house and skidded to a stop, her rear tire sliding on the snowy grass. Staring up at Richie, Ella boomed. It's the Sasquatches! Totally confused, Richie stayed silent. They're gouting out! I'm sure of it! How do... Ella waved Richie down. Come on! We gotta go! What? My parents. What if... I think they'd rather find that you out of bed than find a Sasquatch lounging in their front porch swing. On the windowsill, Marlo chirped once, siding with Ella. Richie gave in. Okay, I'm coming. He closed the window, dressed quickly, then stepped gingerly past his be parents' bedroom. At the front door, he slipped into his running shoes, jacket, and hat, then went out onto the front porch. From around the corner of the house, Ella pedaled up to him. You got your bike? She asked. Mm-mm. It's downstairs for the winter. Then get on, she instructed. Richie looked her bike over. On where? Your head? The handlebars. Yeah, right. Richie, if there was ever a time to be brave, this is it. Now get on. Ella was right. If the Sasquatches were storming out of the grottoes, there was no other choice. He piled into the, he piled onto the bike, his skinny rear end dangling over the handlebars. 
Marlow swooped down and landed on his cap beside the pom-pom, which was twice as big as he was. Ow! Richie shifted onto the handlebars. Something's poking my butt! Quit squirming, Alice said, and hold on. I'm going to make this trip in record time. As she forced her weight onto the pedals, the bike slowly began to move. The handlebars jerked from side to side, the bike veering in all directions. Stay still, Alice said. But my butt, Richie protested. No butts. I don't want to hear about either one of them. As the bike gained speed, it became easier for Ella to control the handlebars and manage Richie's weight. She crossed the yard and turned onto the street, pedaling faster and faster. Be careful, Richie commanded. Ella's lack of response made him nervous. As Ella, Richie, and Marlo faced toward the zoo, Richie became more and more afraid about what they might find there. And I'll stop the video there, ending chapter 26. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, as we come across the next uh, several chapters in the Secret Zoo, um, Riddles in Danger, the chapters do tend to be a little shorter, so I'm going to try to go a little bit further past the normal two chapters that I usually do. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please take good care of yourselves and be safe.